Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at 5. It is Wednesday, October 24th. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Wontore. And we are here with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> and we have a fabulous guest today. We have Nathan Salstone, who has a new show at 54 Below, and he is in Harry Potter yeah, he and right the Cursed from Child. Hogwarts, yeah. He came here from Hogwarts. In between shows. That's right. <laughs> Before we get to that, let's get to our top five. We found out what these original witches are going to be singing for this very special anniversary. Now, this was not the shocking story of the, of the day for me because I actually got to watch the taping of... I know, you keep rubbing it in. I'm not yeah. showing off, but of the wicked... What's it called? A Very Wicked Halloween. Mm -hmm. A Very Wicked Halloween. Oh, very good. Uh, it's airing on NBC next Monday at 10 p.m. Hey, Beth, did you know it's Wicked Month? Really? I'm wearing green today. 15. My pants, oh, are, you my are. pants are green. Are you going to wear green Caitlin. next Wednesday? You know, I'm not a theme type Tuesday, person. Tuesday's the anniversary. I'm wearing it all month. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Uh, so anyway, I don't know if you've heard of Adina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth. They, Who? They were in the original cast of Wicked, and they have reunited for the special, and they were on the Today Show uh, today. You can say because that today. That's what you do. today. This morning. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and they announced that... Shocking. Get ready. What? Kristen Chenoweth is going to sing popular. What? What? <laughs> Any other surprises? Which she does at every concert ever, <laughs> and she's better than ever singing it. That's true. And Nina Menzel is going to sing Defying Gravity. Oh, thank God. I'll give you some more scoops. Okay. Also, they're also going to sing For Good and a bunch of other Well, there Alphas are other people Linda. performing the Wicked Song. Ariana Grande's doing The Wizard of Night. This is not shocking, but I don't know if I'm not supposed to reveal it, but I am revealing it. Anyway, there you go. Uh, it is awesome. Watch it. It's going to be great. You're I'm, excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. You, and your daughter's going to love it. She will. Uh, and you know what else? I also interviewed Adina and Kristen, not together, but I interviewed them as well. And that video is going up on the site now, so you can Check find out. out what I got from What them. they said to you. <laughs> and this off-Broadway play has been extended. This off-Broadway play is at the Roundabout Underground. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a one-week extension to Ming Pfeiffer's world premiere play, Usual Girls, which is about how girls grow up. It looks fabulous. Mm. Uh, it was initially slated to run through December 9th. Now it will go through December 16th. And uh, there you go. Is it already night in performance? Is, it's, already, it's already in performance. It opens, no, I, th I believe it's already in performance. Yeah, it's it opens previous. November 5th. Hey, I didn't know Ryan Redman was in a new show. Ryan Redman. Former, okay, let me tell you the cast. Yes. Let me just do that. I'm sorry. Midori Ryan Francis, Raviv Allman, Ryan Redmond, and Allie Rose Dacus are in it. Ryan Redmond has been in many shows that you know and love, including one with Adina Menzel. If then. She, was, I mean, she had that saucy bit where she was the girl on the punch. She's the girl on the thing. <laughs> and she was our former vlogger. What was her vlog name? Cheer Factor. <laughs> Cheer yes, Factor. Yes, I, I remembered one. I bring it Don't on. Bring it on. That's correct. Yes. I love that. And the cast has been announced for this new work. You know who's a fantastic actress? Marin Ireland. Marin Ireland. You know whose name I say wrong sometimes? Mar Marin. I right, say it Marin. It's Marin. 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 Ireland. It's Marin. <laughs> anyway, there's a new play called Blue Ridge. Abby Rosebrock wrote it. Mm -hmm. And Atlantic Theatre Company will be uh, doing it. And it starts December 12th. And Marin, Tony nominee Marin Ireland. I have to keep <laughs> you saying it. Look at me every time you wrong. say it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, uh, Marin Ireland it plays a progressive high school teacher with a rage problem. Sounds wow, like fun. That sounds scary. Who retaliates against her boss and is sentenced to six months at a church sponsored halfway house where she attends to everyone's recovery but her own, including mm -hmm. maybe the recovery of co stars Crystal and Lloyd. Mm -hmm. who you know and love from... Dear Evan Hansen. Thank you. This is like a little game. Uh, <laughs> Kyle Beltran, Nicole Lewis, Chris Dock. And it's a limited uh, run through January 27th. You know, this is... I want to remind everyone, because I was saying Marin, Ireland. Marin, the Marin Maisie Memorial is tomorrow. That's right. That's at the Gershwin that, Theater. That's a, a, but that's tomorrow at the Gershwin Theater mm -hmm. at 3.30. Mm -hmm. It's open to the public. So uh, first come, first seated. So... If you are in the Broadway area, it's tomorrow, open to the public. That's going to be yeah. kind of like an event, uh, a really beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a very moving. To a fantastic lady. So mm -hmm. that's tomorrow. And this upcoming Broadway play's history has been named a fan favorite to no one's surprise. This is actually kind of cool. I did some. Uh, some research about it. Mm -hmm. So 
To Kill a Mockingbird was, was voted America's best loved novel. Lots of competition there. They weren't just looking at American um, novels. They were looking at a lot of novels. They had a hundred. Really contemporary novels. Like really Twilight contemporary. was a nominee, yeah. I think. That's Outlander right. So number, number two, two was the Outlander series. I love that. Number three was the Harry Potter series. Nathan Salstone is here today, by Wait, the way. Wait, the Outlander series is that um, popular? Oh, Apparently. Yeah. Apparently, I gotta watch that show. Is that the yeah. TV show? It's, it's a so TV good. show. So okay, it's a I know. Everyone's been telling me to watch it forever. It's but so good. I know. So the voting happened between May 22nd, October 18th. Meredith Vieira is the host. It's on PBS, and playwright Aaron Sorkin was there uh, for this announcement. Jeff Daniels, who stars as Atticus Finch, and Latanya Richardson Jackson, Tony nominee. Latanya Richardson Jackson, who's also in To Kill a Mockingbird, were there. To Kill a Mockingbird, the play. The adaptation of Harper Lee's novel begins previews at the Schubert Theater on November 1st, directed by Bartlett Shear. How exciting. And we got some sad news for a little piece of Broadway history. So the drama book. Way to end on a bummer, Caitlin. Sorry. Okay. So there's, I could go, th we could talk a lot about what, what, what's happening with retail versus online. Really? Do we have to do to that rising now? rising rents in New York City. Oh, oh, uh, the Drama Bookshop, in my time in New York, has been in multiple It locations. has moved locations. Right. Uh, the current location, it's a 100-year-old store. Obviously, this is where you go to buy scripts mm -hmm. and books right. about what we all love. Um, <laughs> and in the old days, you could look at the call board on there. A little yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, anyway, the, the current location, rent is going up by 50%, so they're out. Um, and it is closing in early 2019. There's also a theater there, a performance space, and so it's all that's all over. And they're looking for a new home. So if I hope you, they if find you it. have a place, if you have a spot, yeah, if you have good affordable rent for um, theater fans to gather and buy their scripts, then let go them know. Tell them. Go <laughs> give, give them a place. Where are you going them, with this? Them. We need a place for these books. We do. We do. Can't just be online. Mm -hmm. Got to hold it. We in need here. a brick and mortar, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go find a brick and mortar. All right, while you do that, you're thanks, Paul. One of the stars of Harry Potter and the First Child's I one and two. Well, <laughs> goodbye, Paul. Okay. Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest? <laughs> yes, definitely, guys. Today we have Nathan Salstone in the studio with us. Today he's currently making his Broadway debut as an original Broadway cast member of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Parts One and parts two. He's also getting ready for his debut solo show at Feinstein's 54 Below called Selling Myself Short. He's a recent graduate of Carnegie Mellon University and got a BFA in musical theater act at slash acting. And he has performed at the Good Speed, the Texas Shakespeare Festival, and the Port Front Porch Theatricals. Um, be sure to follow him on social media at Nathan Southstone and leave all of your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome Nathan and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hey, Nathan. Oh, the intro. Thanks so much. Did you just literally run here from the Lyric Theater? I did. We just uh, finished That's part a long one. show. You finished part one. Yeah. Do you have part two tonight? Part two tonight. We do wow. two shows on Wednesday, Saturday, Sundays. How's it going over there? It's a busy schedule. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, though. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole lot of fun. I mean, it's it's cool. Like, you know, we're telling, we're, we're, we're living people's dreams it, out in the audience, seeing, you know, they're seeing getting it to in the see flesh. the characters live, and... The, these characters and stories that they grew up with. All right, we're going to talk about Harry Potter because I know you guys have your questions, but be sure to ask your questions on this Facebook Live. But let's talk about your show, Selling yeah. Myself Short. Selling Myself Short. All right, let's start with the title. Okay, um, I'm 5'6". Oh, we're being literal. Okay. No, it's, so I it's, didn't think it's, you were 5'. I'm like very short, totally so everyone's talking to me. Oh, well, okay. I am very mm -hmm. short. The, the breakdown for Harry Potter said, like, boys 5'7 and shorter. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so all throughout college, I, I went to Carnegie Mellon, mm -hmm. and it was seven guys in my class. And it was myself, and all the rest of the guys were six foot and above. So I, like, felt so short. Um, and I was like, I, I hated it, and blah, blah, blah. And I let it shrink me. And so it's, like, you know, mm -hmm. short, but also, like, shrinking yourself in life. Um, wow. And so I speak um, in my show, Selling Myself Short, about how... I grew up in a household of three women, my mom and two older sisters, and how that will uh, totally affect, uh, you know, the shrinkage. And <laughs> my sisters were like big performers, and they shoved me in a corner, and I like had to come out of my shell. And I feel like you're gonna need a hug after this interview. Probably. We'll have a hug. And okay. after the show, everyone and after just the come show. up and, and hug me. Cause so what are you doing in the show? What are you singing? I'm singing a, a, a good, uh, good mix of musical theater and also pop rock musical theater, like. Uh, some last five years, some bands oh. visit, some she loves me, stuff like that. What a mix! Yeah, it's it's a whole lot of stuff, and then the pop rock stuff, you know, ranges from like 
the animals um, and like Sammy Davis Jr. to like Sarah Bareilles and very contemporary. Are you stuff telling as well. a narrative while you're doing this? You have a little yeah, banter I do. sort of thing. A bit. A bit. But a bit just, of banter. Just trying to be entertaining and have some fun as well. So I want to remind people this is on Monday, this right? Monday. the 29th at 9.30. Mm -hmm. And so the earlier show is Lindsay Mendez. So we know you're probably already going, so you Everybody can just stay. Um, <laughs> and I saw, so I, I looked at your resume, because I do that. Uh -huh. And you did play Mr. Snow. I did play in Mr. Carousel. Snow. So yeah. there, see, there's a theme. Maybe you could help her out. If I should get it. up there, and she'll be like, Who are you? <laughs> and I'll be like, I don't even know. I don't know who I am, but if you stay and watch my show, we'll figure it out together. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. So the other thing I noticed on your resume, and then we're going to talk about Harry Potter, but we're going to keep the secrets. Right. Hashtag. Um, I always look at people's special skills, and you play quite a few instruments. I do. What do you play? Um, I play uh, some piano, guitar, like drums, ukulele. Are you playing in your 54 Below show? I'm playing a good amount of oh, guitar. Good. Yeah, in college, I, I started writing a lot of music. I mean, I'm playing an original um, uh, Monday night as well. Um, You're playing some of your original music as well? That's mm -hmm, cool. Mm -hmm. As well as just jamming out on some fun guitar stuff. And you jammed out. It looks like a dorm room. You jammed out with Casey Cott. I look at the YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about that. What's that all about? Casey was a year older than me in college, and we were best friends. And uh, one day he... Uh, I don't know what I was doing, but I was sitting around, and it was a weekend, and he was like, dude, we should sing together. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I love you, Casey. You're hilarious <laughs> and going to be famous in about 30 seconds. <laughs> and there he is with, like, three-point-something million followers on Instagram and on a regular TV series. Was it a dorm room? Um, or just, like, someone's It place? was in an apartment in Pittsburgh. Yeah, it was in my, my tiny little, like, attic rooftop apartment that I, like, had to make livable... It was a good time. All right, now we've come College. to Harry Potter. So yeah. you are in the ensemble, but you cover... Scorpius Malfoy. Of course you do. Anthony Boyle. Yeah. Tony nominee Anthony Boyle. Have you gone on much? Um, yeah, I've gone on uh, recently a week straight. Um, my, he was on vacation, and mm -hmm. my whole family got to come out, and I knew Fun. a while in advance. So it was like the most stressful while of like preparing for... So it's not like on? just like when you find out at the last minute, it's less stressful? I almost wish it was last minute because <laughs> I was going crazy the, the, the weeks and months leading up to when I was, I was going on. I was like, uh, you know, I would, I would be like really like I'd have to sleep a lot and I'd have to like really protect my voice and eat healthy. And uh, I, I was going nuts. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do part two after I do part one. <laughs> it's just so taxing. And I was like, I've never done a role this intense before. Uh, and I finished part one, and the, the resident director came back, and he was like, how you doing? And I was like, I don't know that I can do part two. <laughs> He's like, okay, you, you'll, you'll do it. He had to calm you down. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I did part two, and, I, and then it was, it was smooth sailing for the rest of the week. I have interviewed some of the uh, Harry Potter stars, and I always ask what Hogwarts house you are. In, in real life, In real I life, am no, we know what Scorpius is. So. Scorpius. And they put me in a Hufflepuff uh, costume in when my you're in regular ensemble, ensemble. On your normal track. <sighs> Which just hurts me because I am a Slytherin. <laughs> so so I'll like make comments like ad libbing and other Hufflepuffs will be like, No, you have to be nice. You're, You're a like, Hufflepuff. I'm not a Hufflepuff. And I'm like, Yeah, sure, fine, <laughs> whatever. But it's 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 a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun on stage. Now, when I talked to you before, just in our, our little green room, I was like, We're gonna have a lot of Harry Potter questions and you were like, I need to take it slow because yeah, yeah. we have to keep the secrets. They must have you sign things and are you before I what, even what do they what do they threaten you with if you tell a secret? I just want to know. So I don't even know what that <laughs> well, is. I mean, it's like we sign legal documents, you know, non-disclosure really agreements, serious. where like, I don't know what they'll do. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm afraid to say anything now. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna ask you some questions from cool. the fans, and then you can either blink or just just act, you know, do whatever you want to do. Huh. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. <clears throat> so Jessica from Facebook asks, Nathan, how do you prepare for the role of Scorpius and how is your Scorpius different from Anthony's? And also congratulations on your Scorpius debut on August 1st. Thank oh. you. She knows what's up. Jessica, I appreciate that. Um, how do I, uh, what was the first question? How, how do, do you I prepare? prepare? Um, I um, like to personalize things. So um, I can say this. Um, the very first scene in, in where you meet Scorpius is on the train uh, to Hogwarts. Not a secret. No, and um, 
Uh, you know, his father is Draco Malfoy, and that already has so much expectation from the audience and yeah. from all the other characters. And so I really just personalize, um, uh, you know, I say Draco, and then I say dad, and I picture my father, um, nothing of like, you know, any like drama or anything, but mm -hmm. just to, to say like, that is where I come from, that is that roots me, and I do that for my mom as well, um, and then I just sort of go through who Scorpius is, what what sort of um, tics he has, or what what he likes, what he dislikes. I have a, a whole sheet of that. Um, you know what that you makes gleaned him happy. from the books, or that you made up yourself. Well, that I made up myself okay. because Scorpius is a brand new character. We only see him at the very oh, of end of uh, the mm -hmm. the series, um, and so it, it's been fun. And you know, going through the Cursed Child script, it's pretty apparent what he likes and what he dislikes. Yes. And it's it's good to know that at the very beginning of the show. Uh, to set yourself up for hopefully a smooth ride. Mm -hmm. um, and then my Scorpius is a bit different from Anthony's. I find that um, Anthony so brilliant, has ma brilliantly mastered the um, like sort of uh, 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 unfiltered, just putting it all out mm -hmm. there Scorpius. And my Scorpius has a bit of, uh, uh, he's timid in his ways. Uh, mm -hmm. He doesn't know whether or not this is the way to go or this is the way to go, but he has to do it. Um, one way or the other, so he sort of he creeps around the situations instead of just, you know, pile driving. But he's into an anxious it. character. He's quite an anxious. So you character. being anxious in gearing up for your August first. Yeah, interview, exactly. It seems it really fine. <laughs> it really helps. Um, but luckily, all the you know all of the original cast were so helpful in That's like nice. literally Noma Demesmini who plays um, Hermione Granger um, was taking my hand and actually leading me around the stage at one point <laughs> on my first night because I was like, oh, God, I actually don't know where I go right now. I mean, you know, it's five and a half hours of theater. It's yeah, quite it's a, a lot, lot of material. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more questions? Yes. So uh, Valentin asks, what is your favorite Harry Potter book and who is your favorite character? That's a good question. Um, uh, uh, it's between the third and the sixth for me. Mm -hmm. um, the third is... Prisoner of Azkaban the sixth is Half Blood Prince. Oh, so cool! <laughs> um, I mean, were, were you a Potterhead before this? So, I don't say this at the stage door because I'm afraid that people will like tackle me. Oh, but I didn't read the books until I got it's this out show. There now. It's out there. I know. <laughs> so they can like tackle <laughs> me on okay. the street, but not like you know, not at the stage door. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I went to all the movie premieres. I, I wasn't a big reader in. Uh, in school, I talk about like my rebellious phases in my <laughs> solo show um, because you know we all have them, sure. and uh, or or we don't. I don't know. Um, anyway, I did, and I didn't read much, but I would always go to the movie premieres and like dress up with my friends and stuff like that. As what? what uh, you dress up as? Just like a Hogwarts student. Oh, <laughs> generic Hogwarts <laughs> student number. But seven. not a Hufflepuff one. <laughs> no, definitely not a Hufflepuff. <laughs> I was setting myself up to be in Harry Potter and Cursed Child Ensemble by being mm. generic. Uh, Hogwarts really student. <laughs> um, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I think this is going really well. We were talking about your favorite Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. So probably the third or the sixth. And my favorite character is um, uh, Sirius Black. Um, just such a, a beautiful role model for Harry. And that relationship is, is so, so powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's got a lovely story. Cool. We can do one more question, and this is, what inspired you to want to do this solo show, and how did it all come together? That's a good question. Um, well, so I moved out to the city about a year and a half ago after graduation, and I was doing a lot of musical auditions, and I was lucky enough to do this show at the Goodspeed Opera House, Rags, uh, which was like a revisal by Stephen Schwartz and Charles Strauss, and a few of us thought it would be fun to put together um, a lot of Stephen Schwartz and Charles Strauss like old music and put it out there, mm -hmm. and that never happened. Um, and then I came back to the city and did a play, and all of the singing was like out the window. And I was like, I haven't sung in so long, and, and that's where I feel like most comfortable, and I, uh, you know, I write my own music and I play music, and I was like, uh, this is like so fun being in Harry Potter, but why don't we cultivate a night of like celebrating all of this with the rags and the Harry Potter and graduation and see if a, pe a few people want to show up for uh, a little nobody singing and uh, it'll be fun. And luckily, um, my music director and my director are best friends of mine. The director is Robbie Roselle, who's directed a ton of yeah. uh, 54 cabarets and is doing his own and has done his own. 
and my music director, Benjamin Rahola, mm -hmm. who does like every Broadway Loves blank series at 54 <laughs> Below. Um, and that's where I started at 54 Below. He saw me in my showcase at school and um, asked me to be in uh, those concerts. And so I've become really close with them. And they were like, we need, we need more of you singing because that's great. Harry Potter is fun, but let's sing a little bit. And you, as it says in the description on 54 Below, it will be a night to remember. Probably. Hopefully. That's what it says. It used to be hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but then we had to change it to something a little more. More hopeful. Assuring, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Everyone, go to 54 Below on Monday night to see Nathan or go to the Lyric Theater to see him run around the stage as a Hufflepuff. And if we don't see you on Monday night or at the Lyric Theater, we do hope to see you on November 6th because that's more important. Thanks. Hope I can say that. You can say that. Go Great. vote. Go vote. Go vote. Love that. Caitlin, will you take us on out? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast form by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Daphne Rubin Vega about her new podcast, The Horrors of Dolores Roach. <laughs>